It's Bible time, and we always start with our pledge, and today, boys and girls watching, we are going to sing the My Country Tis of Thee. So I'm excited about that. Class, stand, and I would like for Luke to come. Luke, will you come be our pledge helper today? And he already has a big smile on his face. Will you help us say the pledge and sing today? I'm so proud of you. Great job. Hand over your heart, and let's pledge, and then we'll do My Country Tis of Thee. Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Put your hands right here by our side, Jonathan. Please join us. Oh, your hands are right here. Good. And thank you, my helper. I appreciate that. You may be seated. Oh, in our last lesson, we learned that song, Silent Night. Let's sing it together. Class, stand. Boys and girls watch and sing that with us. Silent Night. That's such a beautiful song. I love that song. It's so precious. Let's do some Bible verses together. Let's say this one. Class stand. Let's say Luke eleven twenty eight. Begin. Luke eleven twenty eight. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Luke eleven twenty eight. Nice. You may be seated. You are hiding God's word in your heart, and so you are blessed because you're keeping God's word in your heart. Oh, let's look at this one. What is this verse telling me? Hmm, who could tell me about that one right there? Who could tell me? Hmm, Connor, tell me about this verse. He doesn't he does hurt. This, look at this little boy. He is not feeling well. Even the little bear has a boo-boo on his head. And he's got some crutches right here. Oh, it wasn't a happy day for him. But what? But as for God. It's very important. Yes. Class stand and let's say Psalms 1830 begin. Psalm 1830. As for God, his way is perfect. Psalm 1830. Oh, very nice. You may be seated. Oh, how about this one right here? When we look at this picture, what does this picture tell us? Hmm, let's see who could tell me about that one. Oakley, tell me about that one. When you look at this picture, what do you see? I do see children. And what's so special about these children? God. God did what? Yes, God made each and every one of them. That's right. God made us all special, didn't he? And he loves everyone. Jesus loves the little children. Class, stand and let's say this verse together. Psalms 139, 14. Begin. Psalms 139, 14. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. There you go. Let's try that again because I didn't have everybody helping me with that. Boys and girls watching, you sounded amazing. Good job. Let's try it again. Psalms 139, 14. 
I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, 14. Now I could hear you. See, we don't have to scream it, but we do need to all say it together. Great job. You may be seated. And then one of our brand new ones we have been learning, James 1, 17. It says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. What was God's gift to us? His, his son. His son. And what was his son's name? Jesus. It is his son. Jesus. And why did Jesus give us his son, Kayla? Because. What for? Why did Jesus come? To do what? To take the punishment from my kids. <laughs> yes, good job. Class, stand and let's say James 1, 17 begin. James 1, 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. James 1, 17. Nice job. You may be seated. Well, let's sing. God is so good. And I need some helpers this morning. Let me see. Lauren, come. Lauren, will you come be God is so good? Right here. And let me see Cyrus come. You can come stand on this side of me. Great job. All right. Class, stand and help me sing God is so good. questions let's see who is the only what is the only book in the world that everyone should learn to read the, bible. the what the bible. the bible and who wrote the bible god. god wrote the bible that's why it's so important for you to work hard during phonics time and to learn to read and know your letters and sounds so that you can read this book all by yourself how did god write the bible he, he told Yes. Is all the Bible true, every word? Yes, every word is true. Yes, it is. Every word is true. So all those Bible verses, as for God, his way is perfect, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. All of those verses, every story that we learn from God's word, they are true, and God loves us very much. He loves us. Does he hate us when we sin? No. No, he loves us very much. He doesn't like it when we sin, but that's why he sent our Savior. That's why he sent Jesus, to be our Savior, so that he could take away the sins of the world. And I'm so glad that he gave us that very perfect gift. Let's sing Away in the Manger. Class, stand. Table two, will you come help me sing Away in a Manger? Thank you. Stand right here.
that's so pretty. I love singing these songs away in a manger. And oh, holy night about Jesus' birth. Oh, how wonderful. Well, I need my prayer helpers to come, and I would like for Angelina and William to come. You get to come right back up here. How fun. All right. Who would you like to thank God for? Let me get my microphone for you. Can you scoot up just a little bit so we all have room? Okay, here we go. Can you think of something that God made? Not people, but some things that God made. Um, for the apples. For the tadpoles. Mm -hmm. We can thank God for the tadpoles. Can you think of something else that God created? Maybe something that you have that you've gotten. Maybe something special at your house that you can thank God for. Um, for my toys. For your toys. Okay, so thank God for the tadpoles and for your toys. And can you thank God for our school? Yes? Okay. And I want you to think of three people that you could thank God for. Mm. Oh, put your hands down. Be big. Let me see. Who could you thank God for? I don't know. Well, how about pray for the boys and girls who are watching, our friends, okay? And can you thank God for the missionaries? Oh, put your hands down. Be big. And I want you to thank God for the girls in our classroom. Can you do that? So you're going to thank God for the friends watching, the missionaries, and the girls in our classroom. Okay? All right. We're going to talk real big so everybody can hear us. Prayer position, all eyes closed. Our hands are folded under our chin. And our eyes are closed up tight so that we can talk to God. Let's see who's ready to talk to God. Good. Boys and girls watching, are you ready to talk to God? Oh, I'm so proud of you. All right. Okay. Real loud. Dear God, thank you for this. Thank you for the boys and girls watching. Thank you for the girls right here. And thank you for the mission. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for, for my toys. Thank you for the apples. Thank you for the Thank you for the first school. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for our school and that we can come and learn about you. Thank you that we have our your Bible, that we can learn more about you. Thank you that every word is true. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus to be our Savior, to take away the punishment for our sins. Thank you for the boys that are in our classroom. Help them to make wise decisions. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you. All right, let's sing. Let's sing about Jonah. Are you ready? Mm, and then we will have our Bible story. Come and listen to my fearful tale of the ocean blue. How men got swallowed by a whale. Yes, I know it's true. Jonah, Jonah, did not obey God immediately. Good job, sit down. Oh, close up your Bible, hold it right here, and let's talk about Jonah. Jonah was a prophet of God, which means he was a messenger of God. He went and told people the messages that God had for them. And one day, Jonah was talking to God, and God said, Jonah, I want you to go to where, Cyrus? Um, Stand and tell me you're right, real loud. Nineveh. Yes, thank you. To Nineveh. Where was he supposed to go? Nineveh. To Nineveh. That's right. God said, I need you to go to Nineveh because the people there, they are not obeying. They are not doing what they're supposed to do. And Bethany, they are not making good choices, were they? No, they were not. They were doing their own thing, and it was not happy. Oh, they were saying things that were not right. They were doing things that are against what the Bible tells us to do. And oh, they were making God's heart very sad. And God was going to destroy them because they were choosing not to obey. And when God told Jonah that he needed to go to Nineveh, what did he tell God, Elijah? What did he say? Did he want to go to Nineveh? No. no. So what did he say? Let's see if I can get you help or sit down. Milo, what did he say? He did. He said no. He told God no. <gasps> oh, 
Are we supposed to say no to God? No. no. If God asks us to do something, we should say yes. If God wants us to do something, we need to obey because as for God, his way is perfect and he has a plan. And God wanted him to go to Nineveh and Jonah said, no, I do not want to go to Nineveh. I don't like the people of Nineveh. I don't care what happens to the people of Nineveh. Oh, that was really sad that he didn't care about those people. That was really sad. We need to care about those people. And he did not want to go to Nineveh. So he went down to the docks and he paid money and he got into a great big what, Oakley? Ship. Stan, tell me you're right. Ship. Yes, he got into a ship. And where did he go in that ship, Catherine? Did he stay up on the top of the ship? No, where do you go? Connor, where did he go? To the bottom of the ship. Yes, he did. He went to the bottom of the ship because he thought he could hide down there and nobody would find him. Can we hide from God? No. No, we can't. He sees us. He sees you right now in this classroom. Boys and girls watching, he can see you where you're at. He sees you when you're at the store. He sees you if you're out to eat. He sees you in your bedroom. He sees you when you're with your mommy and daddy in the car on the way to school. He sees us all the time. Does he catch you doing right? Does he catch you being kind with your words? Does he see you ever tell mommy and daddy no, you don't want to do something? Oh, I hope not. But he heard Jonah say, no, I'm not going to go to Nineveh. And he saw Jonah go down to that port and get in that ship that was going as far away from Nineveh as possible. He was going to Tarshish. Where was he going? Tarshish. To Tarshish, that's right. And he got in that boat and he tried to hide. He got in the bottom of the boat where all the cargo was and he went to sleep. Well, when the boat left the port and got out to sea, something happened while he was out there. What happened, Carter? Storm. Yes, a big storm came. A big storm came. Who sent that storm? God. God did. Mm -hmm. God sent that storm because God wanted Jonah to realize that he disobeyed and that he was going to have a consequence. Because when we disobey, there are consequences. Now, obedience brings what? Blessings. Blessings. But did he obey? No. No, he didn't do what God told him to do. God told him to go to Nineveh. And he didn't listen. So now God sent that storm. Now, all of those other sailors and the captain, they were praying to their gods, but they weren't praying to the God in heaven, the God who made the storm, who made the water, who made the wind, who made the lightning. They weren't praying to him. They started praying to their other gods, but they couldn't help him. Only God in heaven could do that. And so they went and found Jonah because they remember talking to Jonah and they knew that he was on the ship and they knew that he believed in God. So they went and woke him up and said, Jonah, you wake up and pray to your God. There's a big storm and we're going to perish if you don't pray. Well, Jonah knew that the only way that storm was going to stop was for them to throw him overboard because he knew that it was his problem why that storm was there. He knew because of his sin, his disobedience, that God sent that storm. Oh, sometimes when you disobey, it gets other people in trouble, doesn't it? Sometimes maybe at your house you disobey and mommy was going to take you somewhere special and now everybody has to stay home. Kayla, does that ever happen at your house? Maybe your sister doesn't obey and mommy was going to take you to go get ice cream and now you and your other sister can't have ice cream? All because your sister didn't obey? Maybe that happens. Mm-hmm. I know that could happen at my house if I say we're going to go do something fun and then one doesn't obey. Oh, it's so sad that everybody has to miss out on a blessing. Oh, I wouldn't want to be that person. I wouldn't want to be the one that made everybody miss out on getting to go do something fun. Or I definitely wouldn't want to be that person who did something wrong and somebody saw me do that wrong thing and then they try and do the wrong thing. Oh, how sad, because people are always watching. People see you all the time. I would want people to see me doing my best so that other people would want to do their best. But they knew that Jonah was on that ship and it was Jonah's fault because Jonah told them, it's all my fault that this is happening. Throw me overboard. 
but they didn't want to do that. They felt bad. They didn't want to throw him into that water. What's going to happen to them if he throws them in the water? He'll drown. He'll die in that big, deep blue sea. They didn't want to throw him overboard. But they tried everything. They started throwing the cargo over. They tried to get the water out of the boat so the boat wouldn't sink. They tried everything. And nothing was helping. The storm was getting worse and worse. And the rain was coming in and that water was coming into that boat. And the boat was getting, getting to where it was going to start really sinking down into that water. Was all of those men going to die because of Jonah's sin? Oh, how sad that Jonah disobeyed and caused all of these people to have that big consequence because of his sin. Mm. Well, it was decided that the only way that it was going to stop was to do what Jonah said to do. And then Jonah, they went to the top of the boat. Maybe they carried him up there. I don't know. But they got to the top of the boat and they picked him up and they threw him into the water. And when his body hit that water, what happened with the rain and the lightning and the thunder, Luke? What happened? It what? What happened when his body hit the water? What happened with the rain? Did it keep coming down? No. What happened to the rain, Johanna? It stopped. It did. It stopped. The minute his body hit, the rain stopped. The water stopped rocking the boat. The thunder stopped roaring. It all became calm again. Just like that. Who did that? God. God. God is that mighty. He's so mighty and great. He's the one that controlled the wind and the rain. He's the one that created the, the wind and the rain. And he stopped that one in the rain to show those people how great and mighty he was. And that day, those people that were praying to those other gods, they believed in the one true God, that it was him who is the one true God. And when Jonah went into that water, the rain and the wind stopped, and they were safe again. Oh, I cannot wait till our next lesson to tell you what happens to Jonah. When he went down into that deep blue sea, Something happens. Oh, his consequence is not done yet. God had a bigger plan. As for God, his way is perfect. And God has a bigger plan for Jonah. And we're going to find out in our next lesson. Class stand. And let's sing about Jonah. And then I want you to hear about the sec. Actually, sit down because we sit down to sing about Jonah. And there's another verse to Jonah. And we'll learn about that today, too. So let's sing our first part, and then we'll listen to the second part. Come and listen to my fearful tale of the ocean blue. Come and touch while by a whale. Yes, I know it's true. Jonah, Jonah, did not obey God immediately. Jonah, Jonah, down in the depths of if you try to run from God, beware, you'll discover too that the Lord above is everywhere, watching all you do. Jonah, Jonah, did not obey God immediately. Jonah, Jonah, down in the depths of the deep blue sea. All right, let's try to sing it all together. Are you ready? Oh, sit down. We're going to try to sing it all together. All right. Come and listen to my fearful tale of the ocean blue. How men got swallowed by a whale. Yes, I know it's true. Jonah, Jonah, did not obey God immediately. Jonah, Jonah. 
So Jonah went down in that deep blue sea, and we're going to find out what happens to Jonah in our next lesson. I sure hope that you're going to think about the choices that you make. Are you going to make good choices today? Are you going to decide to not tell God no by your actions? Do you know when you obey and you do your best, you're telling God yes. But when you play and you don't obey and you don't do what is right, then you're telling God no, just like Jonah did. Oh, now you're not going to get thrown in the deep blue sea, but you are going to have other consequences. And we need to do our best. Let's choose today to work hard, to do our best, and make good choices in this classroom. I know you can do it. And boys and girls watching, you're already off to a great start. And I know you will make good choices today in all that you do. Let's sing one more song together. Class, stand. And let's sing. Why don't we sing, My God is so great. He is so great to make that wind and that rain stop when Jonah hit that water. So let's sing about, My God is so great. Got your muscles. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty. My God is so great, there's nothing my God cannot do. I hope you remember that today and do your best.